that's ringing my doorbell. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's so funny. Like when you go in, like when you come in, you know, to the meeting, like it, it dings. So the host knows that you're there. But then when you go into the YouTube and you go live or Facebook, whichever, it dings to let you know that you're there. I'm like, okay. oh, good. I'm at my own house. <laughs> How brilliant. I know where I am. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which is so funny because I swear sometimes like just these days I'm like, okay, wait, what was I doing? Where am I at? I was like, <laughs> moments of pause. <laughs> It could be challenging if you don't have a calendar these days. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I have a huge one over here right now because I was like, look, I don't know. Is it Tuesday part 55 or like what? <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's more of this week's Eat and Greet. It has been a, a busy week of friends coming over. All good content, though. So this week, friends, we have Christopher Renstrom over here. Fabulous. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Is the world right over there? Okay. I'm here. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> I think we have <laughs> a momentary freeze. You went into this like extraordinary like tableau vivant. I was like, wow, <laughs> she's really yeah. she's really holding that po that Vogue pose. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's technology at its finest today. And yours was gorgeous, by the way. I was hopeful mine wasn't. <laughs> I know you always get caught in some like psycho looking position. No, it was lovely. We look good over here. Oh, people lighting up the chat already saying hello to you. So. Hello, everyone. So you have, I'm just, I'm no, no fluff. We're jumping in. You've got a book coming out. Yeah, I do. Oh my gosh. Can you tell us about it? Tell it, tell us about it. I'll put a link in the description box, guys, so you can get it. Sure, sure. I'd love to tell. It's called The Cosmic Calendar. And um, it's uh, being published by Tartra Perigee, which, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House. And uh, basically, it, it goes with what I've been teaching all these years, which is that astrology is not a science and astrology is not a religion. What astrology is, is a calendar. That's why every major civilization on this planet, whether it was Indian, Chinese, Mesopotamian, Mesoamerican, created some form of astrology. It was in order to tell time. And so that's why you see astrological symbols in churches and synagogues and, and um, Stonehenges and government buildings. You know, it wasn't because everyone on this planet was like superstitious and wondering about astrology, but it's just astrology was a calendar. I mean, once astrology had been set up and you could tell the four seasons and you could divide uh, months via the uh, moon, um, you know, it, it, it became a part of life. It became a part of literature. And, but it's not really a historical book in that regard. What it is is that it teaches you how to turn your own astrological chart into a calendar. Um, mm -hmm. so, so it can help you plot out the good times of year versus the not so good times of year. And, and everything goes back to the sun in it. Uh, so you'll read about the sun and the signs and the sun and the planets, but where, you know, you kind of like either have a sun sign astrology book, which is all your 12 signs or whatever. And then you have an everything else astrology book <laughs> where it's like, you, you know what I'm saying? It's all this information, your eyes glaze over and you're like, what? Says he quadra, what? You know, or whatever. This actually is like a link. It's, it stays with the sun, but then all the planets will be interpreted as to where the sun is in your chart. Mm -hmm. So you're just always working with the sun, which is the you are here planet, and um, all the planets from your chart in regard to that. And then it goes through your seasons when you're feeling strong, when you're not, and then your elements, are you in your element or not? So it also explores the elements and the seasons and the planets as well in a how to use book. So you get the background and you get how to use. And if you guys haven't seen it yet, the cover is beautiful, which I care about. <laughs> I know. Please, I judge every book by its cover. Okay. I know. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Didn't you feel guilty when in library they were like, don't judge a book by its cover? It's like, oh my God, it's the only reason I'm reading this book. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I picked this one because it was pretty. I don't know how many times I've said that, and I'm an intelligent woman, but damn it, sometimes there's something about a good, pretty cover. That's fabulous. And, and, and I've been very lucky. Uh, my first book, Ruling Planets, had a gorgeous cover. And then uh, the Cosmic Calendar has this like 
fabulous cover done by the illustrator and she does the interior art as well. So I just, oh, I, yeah. I really, really lucked out. I was like, whew, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, well, it is gorgeous and it is available right now, you guys, for pre-order. If you want to check it out, I will put that in the description box down you. below. You can check it out, pre-order it, get it, and then you can have all of the Christopher. But we've got you here now. Yeah. We're going to talk about Jupiter and Saturn retrograde, and they have oh. done it. They have, they're, we're in it. <laughs> <laughs> we're in it. Mm -hmm. The thick of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so we're just kicking off. In case you're just joining us, we're talking about Jupiter, Saturn retrograde. Jupiter and Saturn both went retrograde this week. We actually just had Jupiter take his retrograde yesterday. Saturn took its retrograde at the beginning of the week. Pluto took a retrograde back in April and Neptune will take a retrograde in June. So we are coming into an absolute slowdown review kind of time. But today we wanna to focus on Jupiter and Saturn because they're two sides of the same coin. But what do you do with that? What do you, how does this work in your personal world and how is it affecting us in the big picture? So right. I've invited right. a friend over to tell us all about that. <laughs> Well, Jupiter, but you're right, Stormy. Jupiter and Saturn are two sides of the same coin, and they're the two sides of fortune, basically. Um, until we had the uh, discovery of the modern planets, what's called the modern planets or the transpersonal planets, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, um, Jupiter and Saturn were the outermost planets. And it's because they were so slow moving in the sky that they were seen as being the most connected to fate and destiny. And so Jupiter uh, being a more benevolent planet, uh, why is he more benevolent? He's a benefic. Why is he a benefic? Because he's a bright light in the sky. If you go out in the sky tonight and look up, maybe about, oh, I guess, maybe two in the morning right now or something like that, um, you'll see him, you can't miss him. He's like right there. And if you look a little bit to the left, you'll see Saturn, he's right next to him. Uh, but Jupiter is bright and light and Saturn is like more faded and like old. <laughs> Jupiter, was, Jupiter was seen as a much more gregarious and, and, and fortune bestowing planet. And Saturn was kind of seen as the snarky old guy in the background. Okay. And so, and, and you'll notice that about the malefics, Mars and Saturn are malefics, meaning planets that take away, their lights are not as bright. They're not as luminescent as the benefics, which are Venus and Jupiter, which are light and bright, and they're just gorgeous, and you just your eye goes right to them. So Jupiter was always seen as bestowing good fortune, and Saturn was, you know, the hand that giveth, and Saturn was seen as the hand that taketh away. You know that it, that that it 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 would you know take away what good you had, and so it was experienced as a planet of misfortune. Ooh, that's so rough. You know, you've got the you've got the 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 pedal and the brake happening right. all at the same time with those two. And so right. as you're traveling forward, you're like growing up, growing up. Here's some benefits to help you. This is great. You're learning. And then we put them in retrograde. <laughs> right. Which is when it gets profound. Good. That's when it gets good. <laughs> yeah, that's when it gets profound. Because the thing is, if things come easy for us, you know, let's say you're experiencing good fortune all the time, you don't appreciate it. You're just kind of like, more good fortune, feed me. I want more good fortune, you know? Yeah. You're a trust fund baby, okay? They don't turn out so well sometimes. But anyway, yeah. you know, if, if you have all of this benefit, all these good things, then you don't really value, you know? So when it's removed, which is what happens in a Jupiter retrograde, Jupiter is about faith and it's about belief. And so when it's moving forward in a sign, Jupiter moving through a sign will bring good things or fortune to that sign. But at some point during its tenure, its stay in that sign, it will stop and it will turn retrograde. So it will pull the plug on that good fortune. And if your attitude about that is, eh, easy come, easy go, or, you know, I was on a lucky roll and I guess that's it, you know, then that's, that's it. You don't really go past good fortune. But if your attitude is, I, I, I feel like I was being shown a higher purpose or a path, or I feel like I was going somewhere in my life and then it's pulled, then you have kind of like this crisis of faith. And, and Jupiter in his own way tests, just like Saturn does, through a crisis of faith that says, well, if you believe in this, are you going to go after it or not? Or are you going to invest? Are you going to be all in? 
with no guarantees at all. Yeah. These are the things that come up during a Jupiter retrograde. And so it's taking that leap of faith or acting in blind faith that a Jupiter retrograde really sort of elevates you in a way uh, that's very unique and very singular. Yes, and it's brilliant because we were talking about it in, in the videos on this channel before that as Jupiter is retrograde here too, he comes to you with a fair amount of truth and says, okay, what's the reality? Can you deliver what you believe you can deliver, right? Do you need more training? Do you need more education? Do you need more wisdom in mm -hmm. order for you to expand out there or, or to give? Right. So I think it's a beautiful time in retrograde where all of us have to go, well, hold on. I was a little bit too big there. Mm -hmm. I might even need some more training <laughs> so I can figure out how to take that forward. Mm -hmm. Or I need more wisdom to see when he comes out in September where I can even take that leap of faith. Because sometimes a leap of faith is a lot easier made when you're educated. Uh, yeah. Or when you're desperate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those could be, I mean, those could be stunning leaps of faith. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No spot to run for the cliff. <laughs> you know, leap. Yes. So I think so. If you're um, grabbing your charts, if you're watching, if you're looking up to the sky, let's see. So Jupiter is taking his retrograde at 27 degrees of Capricorn, and mm -hmm. will come out September. September 12th, September 12th, I believe, at 17 degrees. Of yes, 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 yes. So we've got September a 14th. Okay. Uh, September 13th, September 13th, 17 degrees, Capricorn. I made a note. <laughs> I know I have a note here too, and it's this <laughs> name. It's not helpful. So we're going to have Jupiter here the whole time. He's been doing this travel since 2019 in Capricorn. So it's all Capricornian feel, and he's going to stay his retrograding Capricorn as well. So it's very much so I think some things that we've seen and they've been in the works for a while and now mm -hmm. we're gonna go back over them. Unlike Saturn who did take a step out into the energy of Aquarius, we got to switch signs and we all got a little fried and shocked for a minute. <laughs> as, as Saturn <laughs> retrogrades will go very much so like just over some of the things we've seen and we've learned but he'll also step back and go back to Capricorn. And so we're doing a lot of cleanup of what was already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, retrogrades are fascinating uh, to me because, um, you know, I've, I've, I've really been thinking about them, you know, a lot lately because uh, everything's a retrograde. But anyway, no, they're fascinating to me because when a planet turns retrograde is when it's the most visible in the sky. You know, that's when you see the planet, when it's moving forward or near the sun, you don't see it. So when it's about to turn retrograde, that's when Mercury is most visible and Venus and, 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 and Jupiter most resplendent, all these sorts of things. So it's uh, retrograde sort of stands, it stands for the planet. It's the planet saying, this is what I look like by my myself. But I think what's also fascinating is that we have to take into account the 12 faces of fortune, you know, mm -hmm. um, which are the 12 faces of Jupiter, Jupiter and the 12 signs. So what is the fortune of Jupiter and Capricorn, you know, that we're going to understand with the retrograde. And, and Jupiter in Capricorn, as, as we know, is in its fall in Capricorn. It's at its most difficultly positioned. Now, every planet will struggle to express itself. No planet ever gets uh, canceled out. Um, <laughs> But Jupiter and Capricorn is really kind of like, you know, it's like, yeah. and, and, and a good way to think of Jupiter and Capricorn is, is um, Horatio Alger. It's, it's, the, it's from rags to riches. You go from nothing mm. to something and you really have to earn every, you know, this is not a lottery placement, you know, yeah. <laughs> the Jupiter and, and Capricorn. You have to really, really learn and you have to really, really struggle. And so the faith where you're being tested look at where we're being tested. Do you believe in your country? Do you believe in fortune? Do you believe in government? Do you believe in a higher power? Do you, you know, is there going to be a moral to the story of what we're going through? These are the hard questions and they're made hard because Jupiter is in Capricorn right now. Absolutely. And the wisdom of structure, the wisdom of authority, the wisdom of achievement are all wonderful things to evaluate here. And it is so interesting to see 
just how this is all, I think, playing out in the world. Because I think that Jupiter in the, in the bigger global sense truly has made all of us go, well, wait, why do I believe that? Not to mention our nodes have moved. Mm -hmm. So that Jupiter ruling, so that Sagittarian node, I feel like so many of us are looking at why I believe what I believe. Is it because I believe it or is it because somebody else told me and it's just been a part of my repertoire, right? Mm -hmm. And being willing to go back and look over if that is the wisdom of the structures that we have or if there's something else. Yeah. So that's a very global sense. Yeah, and, and, and it's global and it's personal because what's the flip side of belief? It's a doubt. Mm -hmm. And Saturn will always stand for doubt. Saturn's like, you know, oh, you know, show me those wounds on the hands. <laughs> <laughs> I have lemon juice for you. <laughs> I have to see if they're real. You know, I mean, you know, Saturn is like, I have doubt. And a lot of people's look at your relationship to doubt. I mean, a lot of relationship mm -hmm. to doubt can be make you uneasy or make you more polarized or make you more like, you know, stamp out the doubt or whatever. Whereas Saturn stands, especially Saturn in Capricorn and Saturn in Aquarius. Okay. Um, you know, Saturn in Capricorn is the doubt of history. You know, uh, Saturn is Capricorn is this is the way it played out in history. Do you really think? Have you really learned from history or are you repeating it? Um, and then Saturn in Aquarius is scientific doubt. You know, that's that's the doubt of, um, well, why, do, why, why does the system work? Have, have you explored the alternatives? Have you experimented? Have you tested the data? Have you tested the facts? And so, you know, we're kind of on the bridge of that right now with Saturn going between Aquarius and Capricorn. And why am I making this scary little spider thing? But anyway. <laughs> That is what has come up. <laughs> I know, like, where are we going with that? <laughs> you know, maybe we should make it more of a metronome. <laughs> but, you know, with Saturn going back and forth. So it's two types, two different types of doubt that are very, very uh, prevalent right now. And it makes people who cling to their beliefs uneasy, mm. or it makes other people feel, as you said, Stormy, maybe I can leave behind this belief because I've outlived it and, and go to someplace new and different. Yeah, which is an exciting, scary, wonderful place, all at the same time. D, all of the above. Right. Yeah. Now, when as Jupiter is traveling through his retrograde time, he is also going to meet up again just next month with Pluto, who's retrograde. And they have three touchdowns happening. So we've seen <laughs> one in April. <laughs> They're like locking lips over here. So they've done it once in April, and they were both direct. But on his retrograde path, he and Pluto are going to meet up again. And this is um, June 30th. So they're going to have another conjunction. And then we'll see them both out of retrograde again at the end of the year. So what do you think there? Jupiter, Pluto. I, 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 I love Jupiter, Pluto, actually, together. Yeah. First of all, if you look at them mythologically, they're brothers, you know. Um, Jupiter and is brothers. really weird dad, by the way. Right, but but what's fascinating is Saturn's the one who's got the father-son issues going on, <laughs> whether it's Uranus whom he castrated or Jupiter whom he was overthrown by. So, you know, Jupiter and Saturn have that uneasy authority, father-son challenging, overthrowing authority relationship that's going on between the two of them. But Jupiter and Pluto are brothers. Um, and, and where Jupiter was the ruler of the sky, so Jupiter's asking us to look up to our higher purpose, you know, to see the universe as infused with moral, um, with moral meaning. Mm -hmm. um, Pluto is saying, mm, okay, you can look up in the sky and try to go look for those things, but at the end, we all like die, okay? Um, and, and he's in charge of Hades, the underworld. And so he's like saying, you can go look for your truth somewhere else in the world or higher up, but maybe the truth you want to look for is the one that you're carrying around inside. You know, so they're both truth tellers, but in different realms, you know, Jupiter's okay. realm is higher purpose, higher meaning, and Pluto is, you know, let's get down to the more the the mortal. You talk about the moral of the story, Jupiter. Let's talk about the mortality of the story. Let's talk about the truth you're carrying around inside your your gut truth, the truth you may not even know about. You know, so 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 it's fascinating, and and also both of them are judges. We have to remember that uh, mm -hmm. Jupiter judged whether you got to be put up among the stars or not because you have your heroic feats. Uh, that was Jupiter and then Pluto judged if you were good or bad and where you went in, in, yeah. in hell. So, so they both have those things in common. 
Yeah, and as they work together for us personally, it is, I love the sibling dynamic for sure here as well, because it's, you know, it's big brother, little brother, and it, those are the extremes. I'm a youngest, so right. pretty charmed situation. So you get it. You're yeah, right. so I'm like, okay, you know, optimistic about the journey, but also, you know, for each of us, what this brings in, in that dynamic, I think, is this idea where Pluto says, dig deep. The thing that you're most afraid of is likely the thing that you're actually built to do. Right. right. You're built to do it well. Right. And so and, it's and if you don't take it upon, it will overwhelm your life. Absolutely. <laughs> if you do not answer yeah. that beacon that is beaming. But as they come together, so in April, what maybe many of us and energies are gradual, guys. So it's not like on April 4th, the magic happened. They're gradual. Sure. So they came together and a, a driving kind of focused force started to come in. And it's very specific because Pluto's pretty specific about. This is the thing I'm asking you to do. And it feels uncomfortable. I describe it as like the itchy tag where you're like, what is that? What is that? And you just got to reach back there and fix the tag. Right. <laughs> now it has Jupiter is retrograde here and Pluto is retrograde. They're coming back together and they're like, you were driven. Let's fix that. You've either taken some steps and so we'll adjust or you haven't taken some steps and let's adjust because we're going to need to get that out here. It's yeah. so wonderful. It's like Sonic with the um, chaos diamond. I don't know if you ever remember that, but he would get it and then he'd be able to go. Right. He'd just be able to run. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's almost like the difference between growth and evolution. Yeah. You know, Jupiter's growth, but Pluto's evolution. It's like, where are we going ultimately? You know, are you adaptable? Are you the fittest? This is about survival. You know, whereas Jupiter's like, oh, I want to grow. <laughs> you yeah. know, so 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 it's two two different ideas, but similar, which I think, as you were pointing out, is the key to really understanding um, the dynamic between the two. I don't see them as 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 really difficult energies. Also, remember, both are concerned with government and with state. Yeah. And so, and these are the themes that are very much playing out right now. So, you know, for anyone who's like, oh, enough of politics, well, yeah. But, um, yeah. but with Pluto, always remember what's bred in the bone will out in the flesh. In other words, what's been kept secret or shadows or behind the scenes comes out. And it comes out with Jupiter and you might not like it, but ta-da, there it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, my grandma used to say, if you did it in the dark, it's going to come in the light. I was your, like, hey, I love your grandmother. Five. <laughs> I love your grandmother, she was right. <laughs> She's right. So this is kind of the focus that I think we'll see as, as Jupiter is retrograding for each of us personally. We kind of get to look back and see what do we need to know here? What's, what's the wisdom to grow here? What's the wisdom of the evolution? What's the wisdom of our structures? And in, in a retrograde time, we're nicely slowed down, I think. So we have a, time, a chance to like breathe and to think, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the questions we have here, and I love getting this question, but if I have Jupiter retrograde in my chart, how does the retrograde affect me? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you're asking that in terms of how does that affect me in my life? Because you have it retrograde in your chart. Am I co correct with that? I'm, I'm assuming that's what that means. Let's, let's pretend that that's what you meant. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay um, it's going to mean two things. Um, fortune has um, delayed reaction for you. Mm. Okay. Uh, where other people might experience good fortune right away and, you know, whatever. For you, it might be delayed. You may have a lot of near misses or where it doesn't really quite work out or like, oh, thanks for the good fortune, like three weeks after I needed it, you know, so there could be a timing or a delay with it. Uh, what's nice about Jupiter retrogrades is that you grow into that fortune. Okay, uh, the older you get, the more it will click into place. And that's because of progressions and things like that with the chart, which I will not bore you with. But anyway, that's what that mechanism is based on. But I like to call Jupiter retrograde in the chart, the, millennial, the Millennium Falcon um, retrograde. And I don't know if you're familiar with the original Star Wars or whatever, but whenever Han Solo and they were like escaping from the um, empire or whatever, and they'd be like, okay, we're, we're, we need to go into warp drive or whatever. And the Millennial Falcon would inevitably go, uh, 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 <laughs> like that. Yeah. Okay, so, so that might be an experience you're familiar with. <laughs> okay. And it's like, 
like panic. <laughs> uh -huh. But somehow, somehow, maybe it's kicking something or you got a spiritual R2D2 or something. Somehow it kicks into gear and in the last minute, you know, zips off, you know. But there's a lot of close calls, you know, with that, with that Jupiter retrograder, like, you know, it's getting close to the line here. And but but it does kick in. It does kick in. Okay. And so now that's what it's like if you have that placement just in general in your life. Yeah. And so now you get, we have a transiting Jupiter retrograde. How does this impact that Jupiter retrograde? Right. And the chart. Are, are we still working with the premise of that? Uh, are we still working with the chart that's Jupiter retrograde? Is that yes. the premise or does this go to for everyone? No, let's just do this particular. Okay, question. we're going to do this particular person. First of all, you may come alive during a retrograde. Yes, I know. They're like, oh my God, is that you guys out there? <laughs> right. That, that, if you're born under a retrograde planet, and if it's very prevalent, that's your timing. That's what you understand. <laughs> okay. So, you know, it's kind of like all the Saturnian types right now are loving you know, the fact that we're in social distancing and sheltering in place and stuff, because they get to read the books and be contemplative and live monastic <laughs> lives. I mean, so the Saturn types are going to town with it. They're absolutely, well, you've heard that thing, haven't you? With like, if you survive sh sheltering in place, you'll come out either a monk, a, <laughs> either come out a monk, a hunk, because you've been exercising, a chunk, because you've been on the couch or a drunk. Like those are the four. All available. <laughs> Basically, the story of life, right? right? Right there in one shelter at home session. <laughs> but the thing is, if you've got Jupiter retrograde naturally, retrogrades might be time when you really, as, as Stormy said, you, you come to life and you're saying, oh, now the world, now the world understands it from my point of view, you know, type of thing. But then what you're going to want to do is find where Capricorn is in your chart, how Jupiter is operating there. You want to ask yourself, are you a Pisces or a Sagittarius? Because if you are, then Jupiter is your ruling planet. So that's going to be much more important for you. Um, you know, the, those, those sort of basic astrological, you know, figuring out things. So you can see what area of life it's actually taking place. Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's talk specifically about this Saturn retrograde time, which Saturn really, it's interesting because he keeps running into Mars. You know, well, right there, especially at the beginning, they have a weird little interaction for a minute. So anyways, so Saturn retrograde. This well, that's, is, what, that's what COVID-19 is connected to, you know. Ooh, heavens. Mars was the planet of pestilence. We know Mars often is the planet of war, but Mars was also the planet of pestilence and plagues, illnesses. And so Mars is exalted in Capricorn. Perfect. And Saturn is in Capricorn after 30 years. And so that kind of became like a time release capsule. It released that into, yeah, yeah. Mm, so where does, and this is like sidetracked now. Hold on guys, I'm sidetracked. Where does the Neptune fit in here perfectly? Because that seems like a perfect little plague spreader as well. It's, it's funny, people think of Neptune as being the plague spreader. I, I think because of the phrase, it's in the water, you know, type of thing oh. you know, that, that, that it, it fuses. Um, and Neptune is a big influencer, but I don't, I haven't really seen it connected. I mean, you know, please, if someone else says, I've done a term paper on that, you know, please correct me, you know, <laughs> type of thing. But, but um, Mars is the one, is the traditional ruler of illnesses and plagues. And, um, and so that's the one that's been connected to, to all of this. And actually Mars years ago, I, or, or a couple of years ago, I, di I did an article on the Saturn return of AIDS and where I unpacked the AIDS chart. I mean, I cast a horoscope for AIDS in America when it's got a birth date and a time and everything. And Mars was a very big player sure. um, in, in that. And, and of course, if you go 30 years ago, last time Saturn was in Capricorn, what's the plague at the time? But HIV yeah. AIDS, you know, so, yeah. so Mars seems to be the one that's kind of the trigger uh, with, 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 with this type of thing and, um, and, and illnesses and microbes. Have you ever read H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds or seen the I, movie? Not the whole thing, but yes. And that's interesting you bring it up because Lynn Coiner talked about it too in the medical astrology class. Okay, because at the end of the story, they're like, 
and man was saved by the smallest creature of all, the microbe, which the Martians were not immune to. I don't know, they do something like that. But you know, that's the thing that takes down the invading army is that they have no immunity to the microbes on the planet. So Mars has always been connected to those warring uh, microbes, you know, war on a molecular level and war on, 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 on an enormous one. So you could pretty much date it to, to that, uh, uh, carries a Mars Saturn signature in Capricorn because Saturn's at home in Capricorn and Mars is yeah. itself in Capricorn. Yeah. yeah. Mars was happily, happily up there and Saturn's like, oh, I'm trying to leave. <laughs> <laughs> one but day. not quite yet. I'm slow. One I'm day. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So, but in the Saturn retrograde specifically, mm -hmm. uh, Saturn's going to retrograde, start the retrograde at one degree of Aquarius, which is also a cool ruling energy of this sign. So he's, he's just as happy over here as he is in the energy of Capricorn. He does have to act a little bit different because he has to see things differently, but happy. And then he'll go all the way back to 25 degrees of Capricorn. So you can take that and chart that against your chart. Right. I yeah. like... Don't okay. leave out Pluto. <laughs> there we go, right? Right. <laughs> I like Saturn. I like the consideration of Saturn in Aquarius. Like, I feel like Aquarius is like, loosen up a little bit. I got to show you something else, right? It can, it's, it's almost like I would describe it like Saturn and Capricorn builds the Starbucks on the land and uh, Saturn in Aquarius you know, Aquarius has taken him to the rooftop and is like, well, what are we going to do with all the rest of that? We have more stuff. Hold on. Let's go discover that. Let's go see what we can do there. Right. It's like this awesome energy. Well, what it, what it also references um, and, and, and you see uh, Dante talk about it in Dante's Paradiso. I mean, we know Dante's Inferno where it goes down to the seven levels of hell, but there's a Paradiso section where it goes to the seven level, levels of hell. Stuff. And Saturn, yeah, and Saturn rules seventh heaven, you know, which we uh, associate to ecstasy and happiness and all these sorts of things. There's always been an academic or, um, yeah, an academic, a monk in retreat from the world, but studying profound things that's been connected to Saturn. Mm -hmm. And you see that show up with Saturn and Capricorn, but also Saturn and Aquarius, which is the more scientific mind. I mean, what you're seeing coming forward right now is you know, science is under attack, only science can save us, you know, this is what we, so, so you're already starting to see the Saturn and Aquarius energy. Sa Saturn and Aquarius is what I call the Ralph Lauren Saturn, you know, he's, he's, he's very gentlemanly, very fashionable, very well put together classic, you know, a um, yes. little avant-garde maybe, but it's classic, <laughs> you know, classic. type of thing. And so it's, it's, but you're right. It's a daytime energy and it's a more um, enlightenment energy. I mean, Saturn in Aquarius is really about the enlightenment and the enlightenment in our history was a very important time where reason and science went up against church and superstition. And, you know, there's a whole story that results from that. But, but what, what we're already hearing, science will save us, right? Is, you know, science will come up with the vaccine. Science will save us. Science says save the planet. You know, so all of these things are very much anticipating Saturn and Aquarius. And also, let's remember Jupiter following Saturn. Saturn quickly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and we get to see um, the explosion of just the tech. You know, and the the thing we were talking about was Zoom, this company Zoom, and I'm just, they're my example for life right now. As soon as, you know, they've built this platform, it has been lovely, people have been doing business with it forever, that's fine. And they thought they really had a good thing, thought that their security was the best thing since bread. And Saturn went into Aquarius and they immediately became aware of everything they didn't know and they didn't have. And it was this explosion. And I feel like when Saturn changes sign, we all get that experience. We immediately go, oh, wait, I don't know that. Uh-oh, that needs adjustment. Right, right. Yeah. Saturn in a sign will always kick the four tires of the car to see how <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, and it's all the things that you think, you know, have been lined up and are great that are the first to collapse. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where Saturn gets his reputation for being a teacher. You're not going to learn if you think you know it already, right? 
Mm-hmm. You know, so Saturn goes and says, oh, it looks like you missed out this or overlooked this or what about this? Or, you know, hey, there's a crack over here. You know, and it's like, ah, <laughs> you know, and that's Saturn's job because ultimately Saturn wants to make it better than, than right. Than, yeah. Next level. We got to take this to the next level is that that brilliant idea. I think of Saturn. He's like, look, I'm actually trying. We're on a timeline, first of all. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> Chop, chop. <laughs> but also I'm trying to help you advance and mature and just come to what's what's next. Yeah. And Saturn retrogrades are odd because at first you kind of think they're redundant. You know, Saturn, Saturn already takes things slow. Uh, Saturn's already about tests, trials, and tribulations. You know, and you're kind of hoping, well, maybe Saturn retrograde would be a reverse of that. Maybe we get really released from that, you know, type yeah. of thing. It's like, not so fast. And, and what is important to remember is, again, in the mythology of Saturn, like in the Greek mythology of Saturn, or even Ovid, the, the Roman poet, um, Saturn retrograde is timeless. Is. Okay, so so when t- Saturn is moving forward, Stormy, you're absolutely right. Chop, chop, deadline. You know, da, 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 da. But when Saturn's retrograde, all of a sudden things go become timeless. So it's like the, that's when you have the delays, the postponements. You have a lot of time to you know, and you could sort of whistly go about your whistle while you work and go about your day. Or you know, that sense of timelessness can actually give you that profundity or that that depth. Mm-hmm. And that's where the Saturn retrograde brings that in. It takes you out of that deadline and says, you know, let's 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 really sink into this. It, yeah. it introduces a little bit of Sabbath into your life, you know, where yeah. where you you must cease all activity and reflect. And Saturn stands for that. That's that's yeah. his yeah. mission statement. Yeah, I think he's just as much about, did you absorb what we just did? Because I tell you what, the Saturn lessons in my life, those are the ones where you ask me about it today. And I'm like, let me tell you what I know, because I know it. So we like get this opportunity to walk back a little bit the path we already did. And, and it's almost like, congrats, you didn't fall in the pit of fire of your life. You made it. And right. you know it. Nobody can ever take it from you. Well, Saturn is always, if you look at um, the iconography from the 14th, 15th centuries, he's always looking behind, you know, or he's he's on a chariot that's driven by dragons that are looking back over eating their tails, like Ouroboros, the, the symbol. And so hindsight is 2020. And so Saturn is always, Saturn works in two ways. One is like, I'm coming up against this obstacle again and again and again. It's the story of my life. I can't believe I'm having the same trouble. Urgh, you know, Saturn, you know, and then But then also, if you look back over your life, you know, how many times have you done this lament? How many times have you hit this obstacle? And, but look at the progress you've made. Look at what you've learned when you look back over. And so Saturn is the one, it's the only planet that really looks back over in that regard. And that's where you get the lessons because as we know from Herodotus, truth is the daughter of time. You know, so it's only by looking back that we see, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of a brilliant friend. So for everybody out there who's like, Saturn's trying to kill me, I promise (laughs) not. I actually think that all of the planets are working for our greater cosmic good, but we don't always know what we need. So we need some help along the way. Right. So as Saturn comes out of this retrograde here, we get to the end of it. Hopefully you've taken a time to look back or to go back over whatever you've been working on and see the good. What is, what's the good stuff that's come here? What have you learned that you likely are not going to have to do again? Cause you got it, which is a, a good deal. And then get your stage set for these small, I really feel like the small things we got to see as Saturn stepped into Aquarius right there, just take a little mini evaluation. I know I did over here. I went, oh, I got to put this in order over here and this in order because it became known immediately. But you can kind of set that to pause because you'll be back for that in December, do you think? Yeah. And I think another good question to ask or another good thing to observe and appreciate What's still standing? You know, the Elton John song, I'm still standing? That's Saturn. <laughs> what in your life is still standing? You yeah. know, that it stood the test of time, that it's still 
going, mm. you know, let's give that some love. Let's give that some, some appreciation, you know, cause um, Saturn's critique um, of Jupiter, um, and it comes from Marsilio Ficino, is that um, complacent, uh, that, that, oh no, that prosperity makes you forgetful. Mm. And I that, would agree. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's, that's the Saturnian critique of Jupiter. Prosperity, because we associate that with Jupiter, makes you forgetful. You forget. You forget how hard it was, or you forget what went into it, or you forget the struggle, you know? Oh. And that's where Saturn comes and reminds you. <laughs> yeah, right? He's like, don't forget where you came from, because remember, like, all of 2000, I saw that. I saw all of it. <laughs> right? I saw all of it, just so you know. Right? <laughs> okay, somebody said, what if you have Saturn retrograde in your chart? What do you think about that? Natal chart. Um, your time is your friend. You know, younger in your life, you may have felt the opposite, you know? Because when Saturn's retrograde, it's really hard to be standing at a stoplight when everyone else got the green one, you know? Um, and so Saturn kind of like lifts you out of the line and, you know, holds you back. It's like being held back a grade. And so it can be very dispiriting. Uh, Saturn retrograde can be very dispiriting. It's very hard. That means it was opposite your sun or almost opposite your sun because it's visible. Um, <laughs> but again, retrogrades are like time release capsules. Um, you know, you hit a period of time in your life where by progression that planet goes forward again and all of a sudden it becomes very strong. But when do you want to learn about time? Do you want to learn about time when you're seven, when you're 21, when you're 40? You know, I mean, you know, do you want to learn about time at a time when it really makes sense to you, when you can really build on that knowledge and that wisdom yeah. rather than like, oh, I've been let out of school, you know, t type of thing. Yeah. So, so Saturn retrogrades, I won't, I, I won't uh, deceive you. They're, they're difficult and they're hard, um, but they deliver. You know, the, Saturn believes there's no greater gratification than delayed gratification. They're like, are <laughs> you, know, you sure? <laughs> but you'll be coming into your own when everyone else is reflecting on their lost years and missed op opportunities and things like that. And you'll be the one who's actually emerging and enjoying this renaissance, you know, in, in your life. So, so it's a really beautiful thing. Yeah. I have Saturn retrograde. Okay. Yes. And I tell you what, it's really, it really is a, a beautiful thing, truly. So I Saturn retrograde in Libra in my second house. And I swear to God, I dated everybody and their sister and it just was not working out. And I was like, my time is never going to come. The universe has forgotten about me clearly. Right. And these are, you know, with your Saturn energy, you guys, I laugh a lot, but these are gut level beliefs and they are hard and they hurt and they are scary and they bring such severe doubt to your table that your time will never come. And when my time came, I was prepared. Oh yeah. Oh God, and what I, was I prepared. I bet you worked it like nobody's business. <laughs> oh yeah, well then that's when I told my husband, uh, my boyfriend at the time, I was like, I prayed about it like a lot and I'm gonna be your girlfriend. So here we go, right? And I was ready, mm -hmm. he was ready too. And, and, and it's a wonderful thing because it's like you, you get this at a time. You just have to trust that Saturn retrograde knows when your time is. Yes. Oh, I, I think that's, that's probably the best thing I could say to work with that energy, that it knows when your time is. And, and don't worry about that because you'll know when your time <laughs> is. Uh, all of a sudden, everything goes bloop, 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 click. It sure does working for you so it's it, you won't miss it you know no. unfortunately what you may go through is a lot of getting to know when your time isn't yes. <laughs> so fun. you know yes. but it yes. does turn around yeah trust me on that one it really yeah. does and don't i think i found too that if a lesson or an opportunity or an engagement with your saturn comes step into it don't try to step away from it Mm -hmm. because that is a lot, a lot harder. I really had to participate and get in engagement. And once I understood that, that made working with Saturn 
a lot easier to understand that he's just like, he's sharpening, he's um, peeling down these sharp edges. He's like, not quite yet, but I promise we're getting there. Right, right. right? Well, and, and, and that's the thing that's tricky and also so intriguing about Saturn because it is the planet of what I fear. Oh, you yeah. know, Saturn is the planet of fear. And a lot of, we're taught in our movies, our literature, our, you know, life coach clubs or whatever, like a life coach club. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, we're taught master your fear, face it, you know, fear. <laughs> and, and the thing is, Saturn teaches you to live in your fear, to make friends mm -hmm. with your fear, that fear is actually a friend. Yeah. You know, and that fear is holding parts of you waiting for you yeah. you know and and so that's something else which is a gift of, of 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 saturn is that you don't have to like master your fear with saturn saturn's like why master it fear is a part of life we're all afraid of things but how do you live with your fear does it paralyze you does it motivate yeah. you does it inspire you does it intrigue you does it haunt you you know those are the questions that saturn gets you to 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 ask yes mostly because he brings them right to your table Right, just like Kitty brings the little bird in the morning. <laughs> you cannot be like, I'm going to pretend to not see this dead bird on my table. <laughs> Thanks for this gift. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Any final thoughts? Saturn, Jupiter, retrograde, what, what else do you have to pour into us or anything you're thinking? I feel like we talked about a lot. Well, I, I would... I would, I would encourage you to respect the two different worldviews, okay? Um, Saturn gives things that only Saturn gives and Jupiter gives things that only Jupiter gives. You know, Jupiter is so much about life in this world, you know, um, making a name for yourself, raising a family, getting an income, you know, taking, taking up your space, you know, and, 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 and making the most of yourself, you know, that, that this is Jupiter world, okay, the, the Jupiter world that we live in. Saturn is not that, okay, Saturn is um, retreating from the world, or the gaps between the good fortune, or the places of doubt, or the places that you're not sure of, or anxiety, you know, mm. Listen to your headlines. You'll hear so much astrology when you listen to the headlines. You know, people talk about stress and anxiety and like, you know, are they going to be able to make it? These are Saturn things. And Saturn doesn't bring that. You know, what it is is oftentimes fear can make us stupid. We do stupid things when we're afraid. Okay. And that Saturn's big lesson is like, stop doing stupid things because you're afraid. Just understand your fear. Okay. Yeah. Don't run away from it. Just understand it. And so once you do that, then you can draw on resources and abilities and levels of yourself, which you might not have drawn on in your hectic, busy, everyday life. You know, so the, these are the gifts of Saturn, you know, and then Jupiter is how do you live in this world? And you have to make money and you have to make something of yourself. And, 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 and so it's very different worldviews that are not combative. Um, a lovely thing about a conjunction is that you can see them working parallel. And that's something that I would really um, encourage you to really explore and, and, and to recognize in your life. Yay. Yeah, and during the Jupiter Saturn retrograde, whatever you're afraid of, Jupiter is going to give you the balls to go ask a question to come to the other side of it. Absolutely. Like I wanna, now we're gonna ask we're gonna ask Capricorn questions. How'd you achieve that? How'd you build that? How'd you do that? So yeah. what's, it worth? what's it worth? How what's much time did it take? <laughs> right? Where's the blood, sweat, and tears exactly? I want to see them in the mortar. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're like, I don't know about you guys, but I lose eyelashes often enough and that feels hectic. So I understand. I understand. Honey, I love your Venus. <laughs> All of the Venus. I know. It was so great, you guys. I, I laugh. because So my husband is Josh, and he is a big part of how things get done around here. <laughs> and so he left this morning for work, and I had on my beautiful orange sweatshirt that is comfortable and my whole favorite, and I just look like the train wreck I am in the morning. And he comes home, and I have on this goddess necklace. He's like, do you have a recording? Are you recording? <laughs> I was like, that's right, babe. You know it. I'm going on the internet. 
bless that man. And I'll slip back into that orange. <laughs> oh, it's just on the other side here because it's so comfortable. Oh. So comfortable. Thank you. That's your Taurus. So comfortable. <laughs> oh, yeah. All the comfortable. There are so many blankets and pillows and everything else around this house. So if you're a high Venus energy, I just, I feel your whole vibe. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being here with us this was thank fun you. i hope you had a good time you guys check out christopher's book i think that that is just it sounds like a really interesting way to not have to be thinking in a hundred different realms and if you're just starting in astrology and you don't know what he means by just a sun sign book and then you got to go get seven others in the series <laughs> check out his book you'll be appreciative <laughs> all in one place <laughs> all in one place all right you guys like this video comment share subscribe thanks for showing up thank you for the questions and we will see you guys in the next eat and greet which looks like it is actually going to be next week on wednesday maria d simone will be here and we'll talk about neptune retrograde yep. so more eat and greets on the way bye you guys bye